Hello, this is Abhishek Lila Pandey. I am presenting before you a very interesting question from the iBrahma series of questions. This initiative is brought to you by iQuanta. And in this, we will be discussing questions which are based at concept building and out of the box thinking. So this question goes like this. 500 persons disguised as James Bond were standing in a circle. Each one of them was wearing a breastplate numbered 1, 2, 3 till 500. A game was played which ensured that the real James Bond survives. The person who was wearing the first breastplate was given a gun with unlimited ammunition. He had to kill the person who wore the second breastplate and pass the gun on to the person wearing the third breastplate. The third person killed the fourth person and passed the gun to the fifth person. This process kept on happening until one person remained. That one person was the invincible James Bond. Can you tell James Bond's breastplate's number? So this question actually, you know, it's, it's, it looks very difficult and here to solve this question, we'll have to find some pattern. For doing that, we'll do, first of all, we'll do just one thing. We have 500 people in the question. So we want to create a pattern. What if there was only one person, only two people or three people? So based on this, we'll be trying to create a pattern. So let us do that. What if there was only one person? There isn't only one person, he won't be killing anyone else. So one person, the same person will be remaining. So if we have one person, the person remaining will be the person himself. So this is one person and one person remains. This is N, N is the, let us uh, assume that N denotes the number of people standing uh, in the circle. And this one, R denotes the person who is, who survives. If we have two people, this is very easy, I'll just draw a circle. We have two people, number one and number two. One has the gun, he would just kill the second guy and he will be surviving. So if we have two people, only one remains. Similarly, let us talk about what if we had three people. One, two and three. The first person would kill the second person and pass on the gun to the third person. This third person would kill the first person and he won't be able to pass the gun to anyone else. That means if we have three people, the third person will be surviving. Similarly, what if we had four people? One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. First one kills the second one, passes the gun to third. Third one kills the fourth, passes the gun to first again. First one kills third and he survives. So if we have four people, the first person will survive. Do you see a pattern over here? Not yet. Let us try to have more number of people. What if we had five people? One, two, three, four and five. In this case, the first person would kill the second person, pass the gun to third one, third one will kill the fourth person, pass the gun to fifth one, fifth one would kill the first person, pass the gun to third one, Third one would kill the fifth person and third will survive in this case. So if we have five people, third one will survive. So, so far we have been able to find out the uh, pattern till five people. We need more. I'll just change the slide. So here for one, we had one. For two, we had one. For three, we had three. For four, we had one. And for five, we had three. Just confirming from the first slide. Okay. Now we want to do it for six people. Let's see what happens over here. If we have six people, one, two, three, four, five, and six. The first person will kill the second person. Pass the gun to third one. Fourth is killed. Gun to fifth one. Sixth is killed. Gun to first one. First one will kill third person. Pass the gun to fifth. Fifth one will kill first person and he will survive. So if we have six people, fifth one will survive. A pattern is being formed. Here we have one, then we have one three, then we have one three five. Let's see what happens next. If we have seven people, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. First will kill second, third will kill fourth, Fifth will kill sixth, seventh will kill first, gun comes to third one. Third one will kill fifth, fifth would kill 
seventh, so sorry, fifth scale goes, uh, gun goes to seven, seven will kill the third one, and seventh one survives. So for seven, we have seven survivor. This looks like a pattern. One, then we have one, three, then one, three, five, seven. It's essentially the odd numbers which are forming a pattern. As soon as you find for eight, we probably would be getting the exact pattern. Let us do that as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. First kills second, third kills fourth, fifth kills sixth, seventh kills eighth, first kills third, fifth kills seventh, first kills fifth, and first one survives. So as you can see that there are certain numbers where the, this pattern is reset. For first we have one, for two we have one, for four we have one, for eight we have one. So basically on these numbers, one, two, four, eight, the pattern is being reset. That essentially means if we start guessing for nine people, third should survive, for 10 people, fifth should survive and so on. Let us check our observation. Are we doing it correctly or not? If we have nine people, third should survive. If it happens, that means our pattern is right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. First kills second, third kills fourth, fifth kills sixth, seventh kills eighth, ninth kills first. Now, third kills fifth, seventh kills ninth. All right, now, third kills seventh. So third is surviving. That means we, are, we have found the correct pattern. So this will go on. For 11, we'll be having seven people. For 12, we'll be having ninth person who will be remaining and so on. So if you look at, look at the numbers where this pattern is being reset are essentially the powers of two. Like one person is two to the power zero, two people, two to the power one, four people, two square, eight people, two cube. So at 16th, if we have 16 people, then the pattern will again reset at 16 and the first one will survive at that time. So we have found the pattern already. Now, what does that mean? If someone asks you that there are 11 people in the circle who will survive, once you have found this pattern, what you will do? You will try to find out which is the closest, closest power of 2 to 11. Closest but smaller than 11. That is 8. All right. So at 8, the pattern is reset. At 8, the first will survive. This 11 is 3 more than three more than 8. So what is happening? Three steps. Every alternate number is being, is, uh, is being formed in the pattern. So from 1, 3 steps ahead at a gap of 2 will be plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So 3, 5, and 7. So we can say that whatever the difference is from the power of 2, if we multiply that difference by 2 and then add 1, we will get our answer that is 7 in this case. Similarly, if, if you talk about 12, then 12 is how far from 8? It is 4 far from 8. So 2 4s are 8 plus 1 is 9. Now we understand the pattern. Whatever the number of people are there, we will find, first of all, we will find the closest power of 2 which is less than the number of people over there. And whatever the difference is, we will multiply the difference with 2 and add 1 and that is how we will get our answer. Now, coming to the real question. So here, we have 500 people. Now, which power of 2 is closest to 500? It's 256. 256, closest but smaller. 256 is 2 to the power 8. If you look at the other power, the higher power, it is 2 to the power 9, which is 512, which exceeds 500. Therefore, we'll stop only at 256. Once we have done that, what is the gap? The gap, 256 to 500, the gap is of 244 units. And as we have found the pattern, our answer should be 244 multiplied by 2 plus 1, that is 489. So this is how you can answer any question with any number of people, any number of people. So this is, I hope this is very interesting and you got your answer and uh, you must be feeling enlightened after this. Thank you.